I'm JG. Simply JG. Doesn't mean that I'm simple, but uh, I just go by JG. Uh, I have always been psychic ever since I was a child. And uh, as a child, it was a problem for my grandparents. I was raised by my grandparents. And, uh, but I now know at this part of my life that I've been guided all along by a uh, a power greater than myself, a God that knows how to move me gently when I'm ready for it, and has finally led me to soul talks. So uh, I was thinking, like, well, what am I going to say? You know, how, how do I explain what I do? Well, I uh, do readings for, and I have uh, several clients that over the last six months there has been a general theme. Well, let me back up a little bit. When I do readings, I contact your guides on the other side. Everybody has about five guides. I call it a healing team of souls that work on your behalf. And they can comprise from uh, uh, spirit guides from other dimensions, from uh, angels. Right? I never know what the, the, the makeup is. But they're, they're vested in your interest. And what I was getting was, at the time, was celebrate ISIS. And I flipped out, like, what do you mean celebrate? Tell the people, celebrate ISIS. And I couldn't get it. And then I had a vision. And in that vision, I saw the behind scenes. There are no victims. There are no enemies and that every single person is playing their role perfectly so that we could wake up. And actually, the ones that are playing the per perpetrators are magnificent beings of light because they make us change. And so the guides kept on telling me, let people know that we understand your frustration and everything, but it is necessary. Because you don't change unless it's painful. You don't investigate who you are when it's, unless it's painful, unless you're going through a crisis. Because when everything's all right, it's all right. You, you don't need God. You don't need anything, you know. Things fall apart, and then you have your 911 God. Help, help. And so I got to see the magnificence of the divine plan how everything was unfolding. So when this election happened, I forgot all of that. And I, I immediately went into, like, how could this happen? You know, this isn't what I signed up for. <laughs> you know, this isn't going to work, and yada, yada, yada. But yet this other voice in the background was saying, Pay attention. Pay attention. It doesn't show up the way you think it's showing up. Pay attention. Look at it with new eyes. Look at it through your heart, not your brain. Stop thinking about it and start feeling. Start feeling what's going on. See, I made the mistake of separating people them against us. I saw everybody out there that was for, for Donald Trump as being like, oh my God, they're backward people. You know, how could you possibly think that way? And yada, yada, yada. But mixed in with that crowd are good people, beautiful souls. That's how I said that mixed in with good people. Again, a separation. There's the bad and there's the good. But nowhere am I claiming them as my brother. Nowhere am I realizing that we're all interconnected as souls and that whatever I do, whatever I think, is being felt by you.
on some level. And it ripples out throughout the universe. So what have I been getting for the last six months? Over the last couple of months, I was being prepped for the election. And I didn't know it at the time. It was things aren't what they appear to be. Let go of the past. Let go and let God. Know who you really are. And, and I have to do this gesture. The past is done. And so I would tell clients, you know, I would get it so strongly that a lot of people were caught up in the identity of themselves based on their past, that they're the sum of their past, and bringing that into their present and making those decisions based on some of the, the ideas that they formed as a child. And my guides say, you don't understand. The past is nothing more than echoes of the ego. Get that? Echoes of the ego. And he says, you need to check in with your heart. What is your desire? What do you desire? Desire is the bridge to the divine. Think about that for a moment. Desire is the bridge to the divine. Because it's coming from the heart. And so, in, in the readings, another thing that kept surfacing that I didn't know was, where is your gratitude? Where is your joy? And I found that I didn't have any joy. How could I have joy? How could I hear the voice of my, my creator speak to me? How could I hear my guides you know, inspire me when I'm busy chattering, trying to figure it all out. Don't you know I have all the answers and that I have the power to change you? And I can, I, you know, it's going to be the way I want the world to be. So I invite you to hold the idea that you're so magnificent and such a powerful being of light that no matter what you can envision, no matter how outrageous it seems, it pales in comparison to who you really are. If you could hold on to that idea, then this is nothing. And the beautiful part is that we are waking up. We are waking up. That complacency that we had, like, you know, oh, it's just more of the same. All of a sudden, we're shocked out of that, like Duria said. We're literally shocked into looking inside. Who am I? How do I want to show up? What's important to me? Choose again. Do I want this? No. I want something different. And don't try to figure out what that different is, because you, you can't know that by using your brain. You can't, you can't know that by thinking it. Go to spirit and feel it. The best place to be from my guides is the place that's most expansive, where they can come in with the most wonderful ideas for you, is when you release and say, I don't know, like a child. I don't know. <laughs> but put the caveat on there. But it is good. Because if God is always moving you toward good, do you guys believe that? That God is always moving you? Don't we go kicking and screaming to our good? <laughs> you know, no, 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 no. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh. Ooh. Ah, wow. And then finally it's, wow. I want to move from the uh-oh to the wow. Not the wow, but the wow. I want to be blown away with the wonder of who I am. I want to fall in love with me. 
See, if I can't fall in love with me, I can't fall in love with you. Because if I do that, if, I, if I'm not in touch with me, and I'm not in love with me, and, and I, I say I love you, it's conditional. It's either to make me feel good or make you feel good or validate me or validate you or that I need you in order to complete me, all of those kinds of things. But anyway, you look at it, bottom line, it's conditional love. The only way that I have found to get to conditional, unconditional love is to tune within and just feel it in my heart space. And you know what happens? As soon as you do that, you get soul wisdom. You get grace. And that's what happened to me when uh, I did that. I got to see Donald differently. I got, and how I got to see it was, I saw a rerun of when he became president and everyone was applauding him. And he was looking around, and you could see him soaking it all in. He needed that. He needed that love. He needed that approval. That wounded child within him was screaming for love. I couldn't have done that had I not gone to my heart, to the heart space. And what the benefit I got, I got peace, and I got a level of grace. And, and, and the beautiful part of it, I got a technique that's working for me. When my mind starts spinning again, because I got grace, but I know how to get out of grace very, very quickly. <laughs> All I have to do is see his face. <laughs> I, I'm out of grace. I'm out of grace. Because it brings up some of the painful things for me. Not, not that he is doing that to me. I'm doing that to me. I chose it. That's what blows me away, is that I, that I chose it. See, I, my belief is anything that's presented before me is for my good. And guess who created it? I created it for my soul's growth. I created it so I can look at it and choose again. How do I want to show up? Who do I want to be? How do I show up authentically? And the only way I can do that is with the help of my higher power. Whatever you conceive that to be. And so I want to sum it up by saying this. I always tell people, you know, that I'm a magnificent being of light. And they look at me like, oh, really? <laughs> but uh, yeah. <laughs> I want to leave you with, with this that I got for uh, uh, several of my clients, especially, and it's over the last two months, is they say, get a journal, and on the cover, write magnificent me. And then they want you to take some quiet time and dream outrageously. I mean outrageously. To the point that, that your ego is really shook up. Because your ego is going to say, it's silly. It's of no value. You're too old. You don't have enough money. No, you, you'll, no, you're going, no there's no way you're going to get the Nobel Peace Prize. That's not happening. You know, but jot it all down. And they say the reason for that is you start exercising that psychic muscle to go to that realm where they exist. And they can come in and give you those ideas. That's the only place the ego cannot go. The ego is great from the past right up to this moment, you sitting in this chair. And it's right for what it knows. But it can't navigate in that area. It can't go there. So when your ego turns and tells you its story, and it says, no, wear the badge of how you suffer the best, or how nobody really gets you, or you are all that, or better yet, that you are separate, that you are individuated, 
and that nobody really can understand you or touch you or be with you, all of that stuff, you can, you can say, you're absolutely right. Done. Who am I now? I don't know, but it's good. Thank you. <laughs>